Welcome to this podcast. Water Polo Expert Talk. Get the insights. Hello and welcome back to the second part of my talk with Sean King from the UK. Today we are talking about Sean's connections to Hanover and uh, we are talking about the current situation in the UK and additionally we will talking about the question if the next Olympic Games in Tokyo this year will be the same as uh, all the Olympic Games in the past. So enjoy the conversation and we hear each other at the end of this podcast again. Um, so, um, are there any any things you can um, yeah give give your young athletes right now in your daily or day to day job uh, with them, um, saying okay, based on your experience, uh, I would uh, maybe make this decision or that decision, or what what are really the the pieces you can can give the the, the young kids with them right now, based on your experience? Yeah, so. I, I'm really for. I obviously I, I I work with kids from loads of different sports. So uh, obviously water polo is my baby, if you like. But <laughs> but I coach rugby. I coach cricket. I coach loads of different sports. So yeah. I think like yeah, the, so the, 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 the typical the UK the typical very typical of, uh, uh, of U, U, yeah, yeah. UK sports. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I think the biggest thing for me is is um, the experience I had playing abroad traveling abroad with a national team you know um i'll use the boy that's in white sharks hanover as the as the as the example i remember his parents calling me and being really <laughs> worried like really worried what what i would think as in whether i would go absolutely not I, there's no way that i want him to leave you know and of course of course i didn't want him to leave but at the same time i guess what an opportunity You know, for, yeah, like yeah. To, yeah, for, to, for 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 him personally, right, yeah. to develop himself as a as a fifteen year old boy to immerse yourself in a different culture, you know, to learn a different language, to to be able to train in the sport he loves mm -hmm. twice a day, sometimes three times a day with Vuk, who I I know you you had Vuk on, I think before. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's it's for me that's the biggest thing is I say to them when I talk to the kids, I'm just like, look, like sport opens so many doors you know and the people that you meet are lifelong friendships like so look through sport alone i mentioned andre yosep is a very very good friend of mine uh vieko kobeshek in yug dubrovnik mm -hmm. is somebody i idolize to be honest but is also a really good friend now we've become really really good friends you know i've been introduced to guys like vuk as a result of knowing vieko and andre so it's All of that has come through sport. So my thing is always, look, the, the work hard. When you think about sport, you know, everybody that made it was the, were the ones that worked hard, not necessarily most talented. You know, mm -hmm. it was the ones that it was everything. You know, they were constantly learning. They were constantly pushing themselves. They were constantly analyzing how they could improve, but also just seize those opportunities, you know, particularly while you're young and when you're studying, really take the opportunity to go and experience a different culture, learn a new language, You know, because they're the people you're keeping touch with for for the yep. rest of your life. Yeah, so. yes, I, I think uh, most of the people are talking into the po in the podcast saying, "Okay, when when I have the opportunity to play for the national team or also for a top team in Europe, um, I really create uh, my own network during the the active career, uh, which is very helpful after the active career. Yeah, as yeah. you mentioned, yeah, that yeah, you yeah. go in touch with people, you can benefit from your your networking, uh, um, try to to get something across. So it, it's really then the be beneficial situation. Yeah, that you create your your own network during your active career. Yeah, yeah. So and both of you or both parties or both sides really, yeah, have the have the benefit from these kind of connections. From me, as in, and and I know we're talking specifically with him. The way he's welcomed uh, Pierre has just been amazing, you know. And that's my biggest fear, you know, was was how mm -hmm. he loves the sport. I want him to come back loving the sport, you know. And 
there's absolutely no doubt that the way that he's been treated by Vuk <laughs> and by White Sharks, he's going to come back and and, yeah. and want it want it even more, you know. So I have nothing but just just great feeling, you know, for Vuk and and what he's done, you know. And hopefully he might well he might take some of mine in the future again. He might he might want <laughs> he might want someone else. So uh, we shall see. We shall see. Yeah. I mean, what's what's great as well is I know, I think that I think it's I think they are going ahead now. I, our our junior national team are coming across. So so Vuk has, has organised basically <laughs> that our our under so our under nineteens our two thousand and three generation will be coming across. I think in October. Obviously, if everything if everything yeah. continues to head in a good direction, then but um, yeah. So as you touched on. This is the links, you know, that, that, that it's it started with a student from my school, you know, to then <laughs> to then our junior national team coming to coming to train with Vuk and, and, the, and the White Sharks. So um, it's great. It's a great thing in the sport. Yeah. So you, you mentioned the 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 actual, uh, let's say, not so funny and not so good uh, situation about uh, Corona. What What is the situation in the UK at the moment for you in terms of training, in terms of uh, playing water polo? Is there anything possible at the moment? Because in Germany, it's at least uh, for, for the most of the kids and the most of the clubs uh, not really uh, at least able to, to train. So only the top teams and national teams is able to train at the moment. Yeah, I think it's um, so. So currently, uh, anybody under the age of eighteen is able to train. Um, mm. There are restrictions on what they can do, you know. And as with any, uh, the frustration is, is as with anything, the restrictions are in some cases quite grey. So you, they can be interpreted differently, you know. Rather mm -hmm. than it being you can do this, you can't do that. There's a little bit of <laughs> Of sort of maybe, maybe you maybe you can different. this and maybe yes, you yeah. can't this. <laughs> uh, the biggest problem for us, Andreas, and and it was a problem before before coronavirus. You know, so many of our swimming pools will shut, will not reopen, will have repairs from never having been switched off. As mm -hmm. as daft as it sounds, you know, like a lot of these plant rooms have never ever switched off. So to shut them down completely for months. All of a sudden, they've got thousands of pounds worth of, of repairs, which that money, that's got to come from somewhere, you know. And if they aren't generating income, it's the, yeah. the, my biggest fear is it's we've been really lucky. My school's been really lucky and schools have been slightly different to clubs because if you have your own pool, you can you have been able to. When schools have mm -hmm. been in school, you've been able to swim. And we've been really lucky. We've been able to play water polo at my school throughout when we've been in school um but the disparity on what people have been able to do regionally is vast you know there, yeah. there'll be regions where the swimming pool is still not open you know and they will have been able to for a couple of weeks now but they still cannot host and then some leisure centers have a differing opinion on water polo and it's and it's possible transmission in that somebody swimming and only ever using a float or a pool boy or flippers <laughs> is, is less likely to transmit <laughs> any yeah. potential COVID, you know? So it's, it's messy, but we are in a better We're It's looking brighter, you know, more and more clubs are returning mm -hmm. and, and able to sw both swim and play polo. Yeah. So we, which is, uh, yeah, let's say a, a good situation. Um, but at the moment in Germany, it's not really possible to train because, um, As you mentioned, also in Germany, most of the pools are closed. Yeah, so uh, when you have a private pool, you are maybe allowed to to do it with the restrictions, uh, saying okay, you can train with a group of people from four people or ten people or I don't know. So uh, big best clubs like Vaspo, Spandau, and so on. So they are, have really the the opportunity to train and to to play the games uh, in the Bundesliga, but uh, everything under this, it's uh, really, yeah, so we hopefully there are not really, um, yeah, a big number of kids saying, okay, I, I don't want to play water polo at this, at the end of this time or period. Mm. 
Uh, this is the biggest fear we have here in the moment. So that there are not really, really big number of kids saying, okay, I quit uh, the game and uh, let's see what, what will happen uh, somewhere else. So um, this is really the biggest fear. I think, I think it'd be interesting. I mean, look, certainly from our point of view, um, the desire to play has been great. As in we've, I think there's, uh, there, there's got to be an element of where the kids have had nothing The opportunity mm -hmm. to the opportunity to to get involved. You, you'd like to think there'd be kids that are looking for what can I get into? You know, I've had all this time of being on my phone. Maybe maybe kids have finally realised spending too much time on your phone is not good for you. Um, <laughs> that that we we may pick up some kids, but certainly again, only talking from my perspective, our numbers have been really encouraging. You know, and the fact we've been able to to do water polo within the restrictions. We've been getting really good numbers, you know, which which really hopefully bodes well. And I, I hope it's the same. You know, I hope that when things are lifted, there will be this. I'm certainly as a parent, I'd be pushing my kids into every possible club and opportunity, <laughs> you know, for for a yeah. rest, for a rest. Yeah. So um, parents, please do. Please send your kids to water polo because yeah. because they will love it. They will love it. It's a it's a great sport. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, I think it's really, yeah. So I, as a parent, I do exactly the same. So I'm really happy that uh, my son is able to, to train. And, uh, but uh, anyway, so it, it's not really the easiest situation when you are uh, every day only able to train when there's no really competition. So then you yeah. have no real games against others. So, and maybe also the difference in the level of training, then it's maybe a uh, totally different one uh, because you are able to train for the last couple of months uh, throughout the year and the other guys are really able to train for the last uh, four or six weeks yeah. so yeah. yeah it's it's not the easiest situation at the moment no not at all Not the easiest situation. I, I think uh, it's also the, the, the host of the next Olympic Games. <laughs> so um, at least they, they will happen. So what do you think about these kind of games without any audience or without any fans? So it's maybe when, when you mentioned your special moment uh, in your Olympic yeah. Games, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's really the, the moment with the fans and the audience and the, and the sound. You're walking in the, uh, into the pool. This is not really the same, right? No, no. I think it it, it definitely isn't. It definitely isn't. But uh, look, there's a there's a gold medal off on offer, you know. And mm -hmm. I think that um, it's the same. So there's nothing the notice it's on the, the medal same. at um, the end. Uh, you won and, this medal without yeah, audiences, <laughs> and nobody nobody will celebrate any less. You know, if they win that gold yeah. medal, and and nobody will ever ever disregard that gold medal because there weren't fans you know so mm -hmm. i think it's I, i i i often wonder and i don't want to i don't want to be disrespectful at all but look like for for, for 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 south africa that obviously it's i think it's amazing that they're going you know to have that that's that spot that representative going is, is is only good for our sport you know to have we want more countries playing we want our sport played everywhere you know every any sport wants that um It will be a very different experience for them, you know, that it it will like a behind closed doors Olympics is not like not like Rio, not like London, mm -hmm. not like where you have that that real buzz. But look, it's still it, you're still an Olympian. You're still somebody that 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 achieved that, you know, as I say, look for the top teams, you world championships. You know, the Europeans, everybody wants to be world champion, but the Olympic Games is the pinnacle. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's the one that everybody wants. Now, I get I get really excited when you think about the sort of teams that you put into that category going into Tokyo. I think it's going to be fascinating. You know, I think it's going to be a really interesting games, particularly with the new rules and how they've been bedded in now and how referees are maybe interpreting them slightly differently now. I think it's. It's going to be really interesting. That fight for the medals is going to be <laughs> very, very interesting, you know. Yeah, yeah. So when you mentioned the new rules, um, so I guess the, the basic idea of the new rules is really to make it more attractive and make it yes, faster yeah, yeah, yeah. and make it. Yeah. So, so do you think it's really, yeah, fulfill this kind of uh, ex, uh, thing? So oh, it's, um, that's a difficult question. It's a tough question. Like, if you. <laughs> If you if you ask me if I like the new rules, 
I would say sort of on the whole, yes. Like on the some, whole, some like, of I, the new I do, I do. <laughs> there are elements that, I mean, like I, I use the Spanish. I think the Spanish have clearly been working with the new rules for a long time, you know, because even their, their substitutions are like seamless. Like it's, it feels like they've been working with those conditions for a while. Um, has it made the more the game more attractive? I think I, I've read it so many times. I think one of our biggest problems is there's so many whistles, Andreas, you know, mm -hmm. and if you were to switch it on with no knowledge, it's not that easy to follow what all the whistling's for. Um, so which is also not really easy when you know the game <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> this yeah, is the second yeah, I mean, the second part <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah there's 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 12 outfield players that don't understand half the time so it's um i think that and, and i'm not i don't have a solution i'm not i'm not about to give a, a solution to the to the problem <laughs> but i think that it's right that the game is looking at how we can draw we can draw a greater audience It, it has to remain water polo is my thing. Like it, it has to remain the sport, the, the, the sport of water polo. We don't want it to go vastly different. You know, we want it to remain quite similar. I, I, I quite like, I like more majors. You know, I like the idea of more six on five. You know, I like the idea of more goals. Has it really happened? Mm -hmm. Not really. You know, score lines are not drastically different. To, mm -hmm. to before because defenses are better you know the it's it's what what happens in sport you 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 build new parameters and sport builds new players so it's as i say as, as i started i quite like the new rules some of them um has it become more appealing i'm not sure i'm not mm -hmm. sure yeah. it it still feels like polo it still feels like water polo before <laughs> So, but it, but it's right. It's right that we look at how do we attract a greater audience because yeah. we, we, we love the sport. We want it. We want more people to be exposed to the sport, you know? So it's the right, it's certainly the right way to go. I don't have the answers. I'm not, there. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not sure how we go about doing it, but um, yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm quite sure that we are not able to give here some, some uh, final yeah, answers yeah. to the questions. Uh, good, but there good. I was, so wor many... I was worried. I was worried. <laughs> yeah, I was worried yeah so there, there, there are so many possible yeah. ways uh, to to uh, to come to the end. But I think uh, one thing um, coming to my mind, or I recognize during the um, Olympic uh, qualifying uh, tournament in in Rotterdam was the video assistant referee. So, which is from my perspective really uh, a good uh, enhancement. Yeah, immediately, immediately, I th I thought of the Premier League and. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't know how widely covered it is in Germany, but VAR is not popular in 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 the UK. <laughs> it is it's not popular, and yeah, I think yeah, so. It's not popular because the yeah. rules are not clear enough. Yes, true. <laughs> I think look, if it's if it if it's clear what VAR is to be used for, I think it's a, I think it's brilliant. I'm I'm completely in favour of it. I'm I'm going off talking about football, but in football, it's mm -hmm. no decision is the same. You know the The yeah. VAR intervenes for completely different, th but then doesn't intervene for a serious, for a serious challenge, or mm -hmm. or a, it, it's not it's not really defined what it is. You know, yeah. I, I I'm I'm in favour. You know, VI one moment sticks out. You know, and I was at the game, Croatia Spain in 2012. Ivan Perez had a backhand that I'm pretty <laughs> sure went in the goal, but wasn't given. You know, now. Croatia went on to win gold at that Olympic Games. <laughs> so it's it's wrong to look at single moments, but that yeah. that would have been a situation whereby VAR would have least have given us clarity on on the situation. It would have at least given us uh, that chance to have another look. Yeah, yeah. So I think uh, I also talked to referee Frank Ome from Germany, who's also yeah. um, the referee on the in Rotterdam, and uh, he uh, yeah says, okay, you are not really able to challenge each uh, situation in the game because the VAR it's only uh, able to to say okay, it's a goal or a no goal. Yeah. So yeah, any yeah. other situation where we have, for uh, for example, you mentioned um, um, in the in the in the football or in the Premier League, for example, where you have, uh, I think, 
more opportunities to 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 go to the to the referee or to the um, video referee and saying okay can you uh, please uh, check these kind of situation yeah so i think we we have quite different situation between the, the two sports um, yeah. but i think in the water polo as we mentioned before when you say okay you have to the um, yeah the, you are sure that that it was a goal and uh, or you are sure that it was a not a goal so th this makes then sh at at the end really the big difference between the yeah the two sports i guess and as we and as we said a moment ago look we want the sport to be more appealing we don't yeah. want we don't want more downtime so What VAR has done in the in football is made games longer. Mm -hmm. Where yeah, where so we do, 95, we 96 minutes. <laughs> we don't we don't want that. You know, we don't want a water polo where the players are treading water on screen yeah. for so I think look, I think I'm I'm for it, you know, I'm for technology in sport, full stop. And we're probably getting it right at the moment. You know, we're getting it right that that is all it is concerned with is is goal or no goal. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think um, to to remember uh, to to say it again, what you mentioned before, it's really then during the next Olympic Games, really a really exciting um, tournament. Yeah, with these kind of uh, teams, uh, Hungary and uh, Serbia and so on. So it's really uh, a really thrilling thrilling tournament. Also, when you have no no audience, but as you mentioned before, it's the same for the athletes going there. Yeah, I think. Um... What I like is just the the difference in style as well, you know, like the the top nations, the ones we would consider, and this there's, there's there's nations you can't rule out, you know, you can't Croatia, Croatia crawled through an Olympic qualifications, you know, in Rotterdam, mm -hmm. but you cannot rule Croatia out of the picture, you know, it's there. That's the exciting thing is how many could 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 <laughs> could reach that could reach that gold medal game. But as I, as I started, I think the, the sort of difference in style is uh, I'm a big fan of, I like the way Italy and Spain play. You know, I'm a big fan of particularly the Spanish. You know, I really like mm -hmm. the way that Spain, Spain have sort of picked the best parts of, of everything. Um, I like the way that Japan play. You know, I think mm -hmm. I keep... Yeah, so I, I keep, heard this several times. <laughs> yeah, I keep I keep hearing that that Japan have prepared something, you know, behind closed doors, you know, for maybe the next progression of, of what they, of their style, this Japanese press. Um, I think that the top nations for the first time have benefited from a, a smaller nation in Japan. You know, mm -hmm. countries are looking at the way they play and going, this is, we can, we can, we can have this, we can use this within our system. Um, I think it's just going to be so exciting, you know, whether if Japan had a style that maybe they shock, they shock somebody early on, <laughs> because look, the, the level of the coaches and the players are so, so intelligent at that level that I think it was Japan played this way. And very quickly, I think Germany and Hungary very quickly found a way to isolate the Japanese players to make it more of a one V one battle, which, which basically completely, not destroyed the system, but made it very <laughs> difficult for yeah. for it to play to its strengths. Um, it would be, I, I mean, look for the sport. It would be amazing if Japan did upset somebody, you know, early. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure that I'm sure that they very quickly those teams will adapt and 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 change to. But I mean, that's exciting in itself, you know. Japan bringing a, a, a an even more unusual style because look, water polo has been pretty similar for a while. You know the way mm -hmm. the teams play. To have yeah. something so different is is really good for the sport. So yeah, yeah I mean, I, I I I'm really excited to see how Spain go in Tokyo. I'm really really interested. You know, I I was fortunate. I he was very young, but I played with Alberto Munares in Navarra. He he is a Pamplona born boy. Um, he's now one of the best players in the world. You know, he's without doubt able to play any position. Um, and um, so I obviously I've got I guess I've got a little bit of a soft spot for Spain because of him. And so I'm really interested to see how they go. You know, they've been so close. They've been so close. Um, them and Serbia seems to be the 
but you can't rule out Hungary. Look, the, as I go, I'm naming yeah, more yeah. and more countries that you cannot <laughs> rule out. So it, it's going to be really exciting. Yeah, so I, I, um, the, the the point you mentioned before that you have to find your, uh, yeah, let's say, to to you have to be different than others, yeah. So to to make the change and to 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 make the point at the end. So this is really the point coming also from from Tamás uh, Mertz, um, uh, the the trainer of uh, the Hungarian uh, national team, saying, okay, the the world uh, is so close uh, on the top that you have to find your special thing and special move or special moment uh, to, to, to make real the difference uh, instead yeah. of the others. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. this is exactly the point you mentioned. Yeah, I, I, I was really fortunate, actually. I, um, I took part in like a, 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 like a fantasy league for the, for the world <laughs> championships, league. which feels, which feels, and Vuk was involved and uh, Vieco was involved and Andre Josset was involved and, loads of coaches from all over the world and there was talk that we may do it again in the olympics so i really hope so because um it i it will mean that i watch every game and <laughs> and, and and make sure that i've got the strongest roster for each game i possibly can but it, it's just look i think that it's the pinnacle i come back to for the athletes olympic gold is and there's loads of incentives attached to it you know with yeah. with being an olympic champion you know and I always look at, I was fortunate that I played against that Hungarian team, you know, of Kashash, of Kish, of, I could go on and on and on, Varga Varga, you know, the that, that team. And there was this awe about them, you know, as, as, as multiple gold medal winning athletes. It's the pinnacle. And with that brings high level performance. You know, I think that regardless of the year, on the whole, the top athletes, It's been really different. You know, these bubbles, these Champions League bubbles have, mm -hmm. have made preparations really hard. And I know the German clubs are coming off the back of uh, the bubble to go straight into the yeah. Super Cup, and which is really tough. So it's going to be a lot of adapting and, and training will have been really different. But look, the preparation for the Olympics, you know, you're going to get really, really high level games in the latter stages. And, and it'd be really, really good to see who comes out on top. Hmm. Um, it could be one of so many so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so ho hopefully we have really a thrilling tournament or the olympic tournament then in front of us so it's every ev everything is set for for this kind of tournament <laughs> yeah absolutely we need it we need it as well uh, we need it yeah yeah absolutely so just to 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 come uh, or to to come to to the mind from from the kids again and uh, when when so as you mentioned uh, we we have really not the sports which is uh, Yeah, uh, so often shown in the TV. Yeah, so when you are not really happening on the TV, so you are not really existing for them. So this is really the the biggest biggest uh, challenge. And uh, I think during the last couple of weeks and months, also during these kind of uh, pandemic, um, Corona pandemic, uh, we have really a situation that more and more come uh, or you are able to to watch more and more uh, online and streaming and so on so which is which is uh, phenomenal so which is makes it easier for the kids to see water polo at least yeah so which is not really the the, the case in the future uh, in the past yeah so. i it's um yeah i think it's that's the biggest thing now you know for particularly now with how people are so literate with software off the back of <laughs> home learning and it's a mass i mean it was a real shame i think i read the other day with a is it, am i right that the is it len or fina tv is 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 ceasing it's not it's not happening anymore or i could i could be wrong i could be completely wrong but uh, to be i think honest, the, I, the streaming I don't know, I don't service know. i don't know if the streaming service service is going to continue and they're 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 platforms that i've watched the majority yeah. of those high level games on you know so yeah. um uh, at least the, the the fina tv is uh, i think the one you have to pay and the yeah, uh, yeah, LAN yeah, TV, yeah. it's uh, it's a free where you can see the yeah League. and i could be completely as i say i could be completely wrong but i think i read that one was was not going to be mm -hmm. available anymore and that's obviously not that's not great for the sport you know it's um what i like i, I think look and i i've spoke at length with vieco about this in jürgen They really have an amazing setup in Dubrovnik, you know, and he is, he's incredible. He's not just a coach, you know, he's somebody that wants our sport to grow 
he is one of the he he just understands the importance of of countries like the UK and playing our sport, you know, and which is refreshing, you know, because sometimes you you think that we're like I start I think I said by we get forgotten a little bit the UK that probably <laughs> just justifiably because we aren't at that level, but if the sport was big in this country, that would be huge for that would be huge for for our sport. I think like one of the things the clubs have to do is increase their exposure. So those mm-hmm. clubs at the top level. So you're in in Germany, the Spandau's, the the Waspo, the they they need to they need to look into how do we stream these matches? How do we increase yeah. the profile of our players? How do we how do we attract more kids into the sport? You know, because ultimately that's what it's all about. You know, it's you may not be around to see the success you generate if you follow what I mean. So all the work you do mm-hmm. is for the generations that come after. And and that's, I think, something that the clubs have to do. You know, those top clubs need to, yeah. how can we sell the brand better? How can we market ourselves better um, to, to, uh, to attract that greater interest? Yeah. Yes, I think the biggest Uh, maybe not problem but uh, i think uh, the the thing is when you say as a big club you would like to build your brand or uh, try to 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 sell and to to promote the water bolo then you have the discussion with the with the organization or, or with the uh, whatever saying okay i i'm the owner of, of all of that and uh, you are only a member and you are only a club and yeah. i would like to to build my brand for all of us Uh, yeah, yeah, then you yeah. have really the yeah the, the the not so easy situation that you as a top club would like to promote yourself and the and the sport and you are maybe not allowed to do that based on the discussion with the organization yeah sure uh, so this is not yeah but i i absolutely agree with you that the, the at least the bigger club should uh, have a strategy or the digital strategy um to to bring this to the broader audiences and i think it i think it started you know i it i, I think one of the things is at the moment still you have to search hard you know mm-hmm. it's not it's not readily in front of you as much as yeah. it could be but like i see some really good stuff from ferenc varosh you know on social media i see some really i even reco i've seen some really cool videos you know from yep. reco and so i think they're all becoming i don't want to say waking up to it but i think the top clubs are starting to recognize Yeah. that that's only positive you know so there yeah. is some stuff out there it's just it's still not easy to find is maybe yeah. my and, my point yeah so and um when you're saying it's also the res- or it's a responsibility of the club but um uh, during the last uh, podcast episode it comes out that it's also the um let's say Yeah, also part of the responsibility of each player because it's yeah. so easy to 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 do it with the social media, with your smartphone, and taking pictures, videos, yeah, interviews, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. whatever. So uh, at least when each athlete, uh, it, it's also responsibility for his content, and he's providing something. Uh, at least this would be uh, very different uh, instead of the past. Yeah, I mean, look, it's yeah, I mean, that's that's the big thing for me, you know, and I I wouldn't have thought like this, I think, 10 years ago, but mm-hmm. I want kids to love my sport now. So the big thing for me is, is what comes next, I guess, like it's what part <laughs> can I play or what part can we play in in bringing kids into this sport, you know, and and helping them find a dream and realize it, I think maybe is the what I'm trying to say. So you're right. You look, you look at, again, look at football, which is probably the easiest thing to sell. Every player, <laughs> Twitter, Instagram, you name it, every game they will post, yep. lose or win. You know, it's so easy to do, you know, and 90% of our life is on phones now. So it's not as though it's an arduous task. It's a really, yep. it's easy. It's an easy thing yep. to do. So you're yep. absolutely so- right. At least uh, coming back to the other point I mentioned before, it's 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 so easy, yeah. So and you mentioned that you have uh, really ninety percent of your daily business or daily yeah. work, and it's it's yeah. anyway on a smartphone, tablet, yeah, or whatever, yeah. yeah. So everybody is really able to do that um, during during the yeah last couple of weeks and months. So they're really trained Absolutely. to it. Absolutely. Um, so what, what what comes up for you personally? So in terms of water polo during the next couple of weeks or months? We're starting to, 
obviously we start with my own. I still play a little bit, uh, but as I mentioned before, obviously at the moment senior adults are not able. This is the crazy thing, Andreas. I could I could book to swim in a pool alone, as in <laughs> as an individual, but I cannot train with my team. Mm-hmm. So over eighteen, we're not able to have any team activity. But I could book and swim. Um, so at the moment, it's still not back till the, towards the end of um, end of May for adults. Obviously, my playing career is coming towards the opposite end of where it was in 2012. <laughs> so I'm very much my my mindset is very much coaching. Um, I I loved coaching the junior national team. Um, it's it's not only very time consuming with having a young family, but also expensive because mm-hmm. we are volunteers. Um, I have the desire to return someday, you know, if if I'm fortunate enough to be given the opportunity, I do have the desire to, I think, work with kids again. So the youth sections rather than than the senior national team, more so the, the young guys, I think, because that's what I enjoy. I'll enjoy that development side of it. Um, but yeah, at the moment, I've I've been in a discussion with a club about getting involved in their junior section, which which would be really good. So that that's something that might happen in the in the near future. Um, but yeah, as I say, at the moment, it's just building back up to to what normal looks like. <laughs> so yeah, over the next yeah. over the next couple of weeks, it will be the most used word normal at the moment. But um, <laughs> it's it's just sort of gradually starting to build up to to where we can do do the things we would we took for granted you know before coronavirus so Mm -hmm. playing games in training and and Mm. playing against boys that were older and younger you know that's that's not something we've been able to do for a long (laughs) time so um yeah it's as i say i'm very sort of coaching driven now as opposed to playing um so it it will be building the guys up again and starting to look towards Mm. our ambitions for for next season great I wish you all the best um, then for for the development of the young kids and um, yeah ho- hopefully we can back to uh, co- go back to the normal normal there is it again the word <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. The, the, the the normal water polo, polo coaching and uh, playing so uh, I hope as uh, soon as possible I wish you all the best uh, uh, for your uh, family for uh, yeah stay safe and healthy uh, which is the most important point at the moment Thanks for your time. I uh, know, and, and once again, I know I started by saying this, but thank you so much for, for having me, Andreas. And, You're uh, welcome. Yeah, <laughs> and really, really, really good to chat about the wonderful sport of water polo. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks for, for the time again, and uh, yeah, have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you. are already at the end again of this podcast episode thanks again to sean for his very um yeah interesting insights about the water polo boards as such in the uk um, during these days and uh, yeah i hope you enjoyed uh, our conversation as well as we did and uh, i hope you will be on board uh, also in the next episode next week in the um, water polo expert talk podcast and this will be then the recording of the live talk we will uh, host uh, this evening on friday evening yeah i hope you enjoy also these great uh, panel of european top trainers and coaches and i will uh, for sure really enjoy this uh, panel discussion in the evening today yeah in the meantime i'm happy to let you enjoy the podcast uh, that you are uh, growing together with me the podcast and yeah i hope this will be uh, happened also over the next uh, couple of weeks and months and yeah in this uh, terms i would uh, like uh, you to share the uh, episodes of the podcast with your network send me your feedback give me your feedback about uh, the episodes about the topics about the participants in the podcast yeah i'm lo- really looking forward uh, for your feedback as usual uh, stay safe and healthy and we hear each other next week again